S for Horlita Colwinder, a novel by Dino Miss Extod. S for Horlita Colwinder is the story of Gisela, and Gisela now is looking for a job. Exigus hitu viencu hipotitu. The third is menegeta triquitru pe godus lambert ibutu. Hem so fu cropoboli su de artebele. Udalud. Se f dwi puker agsher uv sumzi ped pemigawaset ik idemi nectofet. Ah, thugasak figoner il mi plini. Sig humph. Fek hesh mufen, vil obisen kira esh tek the kelpape. Oh, yarn manjetu wefifim adu sepisum tirgot. Homer tika enverlapped us weeksies. Effa brafilamasurs? 696? Should I go home? Zupoli? Akboli? O log herded un pins res f wet no me se tara wexed lo pin redert er er finalen menegit pebegason zes art do belly enverlap how wibbeted thou hef and ho is zupoli extraterrestrial dod pemigawasat. A seti one, Riri told us him. Uziv brin, vulbrahari, some probably does a sepisum. Oh, artobeli i wavzu har. Spemi guess and igerye erger to tazolian. Pietradans, Pinres is despo, Tazolian, Giuseppe some ek ek so broly vu bruhari, Ziped Lambert. Tazolian, Giuseppe some, Ulebug vu bruhari, Ziped Lambert. Udalud, Cojet to weapon, Vili bos and Urlip. Fulmilo hagelak netulinishik amudef. Hav ho pemigawasat. If poor lu feminism or finnilin, skoyader work, hanna a lorg hexafu, a umi botvad, wear the hood. Ho, 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 a trubisilin kug peherli avuzik se. Stella mene get ulu the go hon grunge fek hesh mufen a savidek or zeflin. Alter mine will let dorfen. Oh, drunner, does the tell as celeb wigglek ish heart to belly. Mijwez seven one five macadan ish hutimad. Sister Mog. Milo will a pemadef uzef hefinilina erlip. Ho, 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 ho. Asudam lo me bromot. Hut the man will it off. Arto belly sec pemigason ik a the kelpape ponadist utel. Nettolini is asterisk, O Gizantu. Er Gizella ne'er so lo oven tim behan pe godas. Is exupoli des fet lorg? Ho, ho, we were told us some of some hops and hexafu, a key what namisa atravise. Key wick, umi bat the visas, pemike wasat. Theopez. How wibbit it that? Grunge, as you are to belly. Lo, ja, floridus, ulic, vilo beeston, vilo beeveni, illy tum, all he got to sad. Floridus, how wibbit it that? Sarah Tom, easty, 
Riss die, de lone tek, is die, seringa patam, riss die, is die, riss die. Keltepec is the Gisela, never mort art to be saying. Yavin ho, a fritty god for not netterlini. <laughs> El long sexy cogra a ki zupli ef get rection summer probably. Figoner mo, he ha, pemi. She was at ho 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 Lo homertic of Cogdus the Gohon. Jane, I would like to ask you some questions because I have the feeling that uh, Gida Kuonte is not very well known in Poland, and I think this is first performance by Gida Kuonte. In, uh, in Poland. So my first question is very simple. I just want to ask you, how did you meet? Uh, um, I moved to Southern California in 1976, and Guy had been, uh, Guy put on his first play uh, called Ethiopia. And I, I went to see it with friends who were friends of his, and I was, uh, uh, it was everything I had ever wanted in, in a play, in the stage, and so I, afterwards I just went up to him and said, if you write another one, I'd love to be in it. And so um, I got a call from him sometime later, and he, um, he said, I've, I've written a new play, I'm going to do a new play, and it's called Igloo, and he said, I thought Brian Davies was going to do it, but he says, he can't do it, so it doesn't matter if Dr. Butch is a woman, so I became Dr. Butch in Igloo. Um, and that's when I started working with him in 1977. I worked with him until 1983 and did um, five plays and lots of monologues and reading from his books. And this particular book, um, as Fahor lead it, Billy Barty did it first, and he did it much as a a book report with a blackboard up here, and he did diagrams and talked about it as a book report. And then um, Guy handed it over to me sometime several years later and said, pick a chapter and read it. So um, that's what I did. So it was uh, this, chap this chapter, you always reading the, the only this was this particular chapter? I have. Okay. Only read this particular chapter because I know the story of her okay. going to get a job. How do you know the story? <laughs> because I made it up. <laughs> Did he ever give you any instructions? He never, he, no, he just said read it. He doesn't, yeah, even in his plays, he didn't either. He would hand you the script. And we would ask, where did this line come from? And sometimes he was able to tell us. Other times he didn't. He had, he loved to read, and he read low class and high class, you know. And he had several books racks in his, in his studio. They were the round ones that you used to be able to go into like pharmacies or drug stores where they had the round, and you could page through the, the little paperback books. He had many romance novels, things like that. And um, also in his studio, he had a little house that he had built, which was like a set, but that was his bedroom, and the rest was his vast space, about the size of this space here. And um, he started out writing books, and um, his drawings were also in code. 
so his drawings would be lines, and he would make an alphabet. He knew he knew what it was. We didn't, but you you would see a drawing of his, and down below it would be a line of text, which maybe it was enough to make you weep, which is a line from one of his plays. But he, um, one of the last pieces plays that he did, it had he always had books in his in his plays. Uh, it had, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six books in it. They never opened. You just got the title on the spine, which was Voyage Bibliotique, Eau du Rono, Madame Guillon, Theologie Astrale, Visions, Les Gouttes, Les Cours Sex Luni. Uh, and then there was my father's diary, which was like a um, coffee table book shaped like this. And um, the actor would stand and go through the pages. And the, the text was written along the line. I wish I had pictures of it. I'm sorry. My computer shattered before I came. Um, and in some of, it was all about the war. So on some of the pages, there were holes in it, you know, where the bombs had gone through. Partial of it had been burned. So that was, so it was very descriptive, all of the pages. Um, uh, there was a book in Igloo, and then um, this last one from Tell Me, which was Kronen and Hot Antologos, the most tragical tragedy ever tragedized by any company of tragedians. It was a big, great big long one and very heavy, and you would read it from here and all the way across and to the pages. And and do you know how this story was created? First, he was created objects, and then he was creating story, or? Mm, I think that it was simultaneous, you know. I, he was very, he was a very private man, very private man. Uh, I, there was a documentary done about him. It was a, after his death, and... Um, Marie de Bougereau did it, and she interviewed various people who knew Guy, and no one could really say who he was. Oh, well, you know, he did this, and he always had his gouas here, and he'd always say, oh, but it doesn't matter. Oh, it doesn't matter. So he would give us, you know, the, the script for the plays, and we'd say, well, what about this? How should I? Oh, it doesn't matter. Just try it out, you know. And then you'd be doing something, and you'd go, ah, oh, yes, ah, oh, yes. And that was about it, you know. Um, yeah, and he came from a military family, so, you know, the, the codes fit in very well with him, and his mother was a linguist. So uh, he, lived in, he lived in Algiers, he lived in Paris, he lived in New York. Uh, Viva was his roommate, Andy Warhol's Viva. And um, what else can I tell you? Let's see if I have anything else here. Uh, it, he was all about communication, how people misrepresent communication where people will know what they're talking about, the outside person won't, or the outside person will understand and the two people talking to each other don't. So a lot was about communication. Um, and he... he his, his lines of, of text were really quite funny, and in the plays themselves, we needed to play them very straight. There wasn't a wink or a, you know, something over your shoulder. It just was exactly as it was. Um, that was a good line. Exactly as it was. It was. It was. That could be a line right there. And did he work with the same act actors? He because, did. Yeah. He did. If they were, if they were available, and they were never, not everyone was an actor. Okay. You know, it was better if you had an untrained person who was willing to go on stage, and be willing to like do it, because you get a trained actor, and they would say, "Well, what's my motivation? Where is my motivation here?" So, and they, um, his his plays were very stylized. And within the stylization, you can really hear the text. Um, yeah, yeah. 
What do you think about this idea of reperforming his pieces? I think it's time. I find it interesting, you know, of course I always, <laughs> it's hard to let go of them, you know, but um, yeah, I mean, we were thinking, we've been doing Tell Me since 1976, and the last time we did it was at the Pompidou, no, we, since 1979. The last time we did it was at the Pompidou this last February, and the other two women who's in the play with me, we said, well, if we keep going like this, pretty soon we're going to come on with our silver streakers tottering across the stage, which would be an interesting piece in itself, don't you think? Yeah. I do too. So... Maybe someone from the audience has a question. I have a question. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, thanks a lot, Jane, for mm. this performance of, let me see if I read it correctly, Espahor Ledet Co Uluner. See, everybody gets to <laughs> say it in yeah, their own way. <laughs> um, uh, as far as I know, it, uh, Guy de Quante wrote it in a, an invented language. Mm. He wrote, he invented the language himself. But uh, my question is, do you know if he actually codified an existing narrative into an invented language, or he just was making up words which don't have a particular meaning? Well, he claimed that he knew what it said. And I, and I do know in his drawings where he began, bef um, right alongside writing the books, that um, he had he had his alphabet that were you know an A may be like this a B like that or there, so that when it went on the page it would the code would be there and the words would then the text would be at the bottom. This one is um, really full of it, and I had my niece at one point said, "I've got it figured out." At which we've all tried to figure it out, but we haven't been able to. And it's got, you know, it's wonderful punctuation. I like the I's and the it's and the, or I mean, one could make it that. The two letters, maybe three letters together, and the big one, and comma. And, but um, that, it, he never said. He was very private. Doesn't matter, you see. So in that sense, you know, we we chase him down. We were always very happy to hang around him because he he always had a secret, and he always had sort of a little little sideways grin, like he had a secret. And you, if you asked him, which we never did, uh, he wouldn't have told you anyway. Yeah. Do you have more questions? Well, did you have fun with it? Yeah? Yeah. I'm just curious because you do, you do, uh, this is the thing in, in coming over here from America and doing this piece where there's so many different languages that in the audience I will get different reactions. Some people will get very angry because they don't understand what I'm saying. Um, and then they don't understand what the characters are saying, and then they don't understand the story, and then they usually say that at the end they finally just let it go and sort of had a good time with it. But I was surprised when they would say, oh, I got so angry with you. And people have come up to me and said, oh, you're speaking Dan Danish, aren't you? <laughs> uh, or Norwegian, or... And I think it has, you know, I'm sure it has some sort of Scandinavian lilt to it coming from me. I grew up in Minnesota. I am 100% Norwegian, so you do, it has that. I think it sounds like elf speech. Elf speech? Yes, I know. <laughs> Good. All right, great. Well, thank you very much. This was fun.